I have a confession to make. I, Joanna Cedia, have never been on public transportation by myself. So this all started like two weeks ago when I got into a fight with my parents. And usually, you know, I don't really get into fights with my parents. I tend to get along very well with my inferiors. So this was a little bit of a shock. But listen, okay, I didn't pay all that money for my avocados to be eaten in two days behind my back. Okay, like it's just not acceptable. So this was what, Sunday morning? I was mad at my parents and by the laws of the silent treatment that meant that I was not to talk to them or vice versa until I forgot why I was mad at them or someone broke the code. Now unfortunately my stand of defiance wasn't really all that beneficial to me because on that very Sunday I had a chem test at 1 30 p.m and I had no means of transportation because I'm still getting my driver's license and as I said before I've never been on public transportation. Hi my name is Joanna I'm 18. How are you? So I made the fateful decision to take public transportation for the first time by myself. Now I know this whole video seems ridiculously stupid. Like Joanna, there's people dying. Okay, nobody cares that you took public transportation for the first time, but just listen. I was never really allowed to go on the bus uh, because my parents were always terrified that I would either get kidnapped or robbed and honestly that was a fear that I held for a very long time which was completely stupid and not founded in any sort of reality. Also for the longest time I had zero concept of road names or intersections like if you give me the name of an intersection I'll just be like yeah that's a place that exists on this planet. So anyways, back to the point. The morning started off like any other. I woke up and ate my avocado tortilla. Yes, I'm pleased to announce that I'm bringing that back. I've come crawling back to my addiction. I said that I was gonna try and give it a break to expand my taste buds. Well, that didn't last long, so she's here to stay now. And then after a bit of last minute studying, I packed my bags and I was heading off to my exam, which actually, okay, I have something to say. Who the heck has a chem midterm? on a Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Like whoever made that electric chair. But anyways, I started to pack my bags. I'm just gonna put this out there. I was leaving four hours ahead of schedule because I was planning for my failure, you know? Like if I ended up on the opposite side of Canada, I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to be able to get back and still write the test. So it was 9.30 a.m. I was sitting outside in the cold, waiting for my bus. Yes, it was colder than the Yeti's butthole, but that didn't phase me whatsoever. I got on the first bus and it took me to this underground station. I thought I was gonna get buried alive, but I didn't. And so I got onto the next bus and the realization that I was actually doing this hit me at this point. I couldn't believe my meatballs. Like I was 100% sure that by this point, I would have already taken the wrong bus or done something stupid. But yeah, I got onto the next bus do you hear that? It was silent. I had the entire bus to myself. The bus driver took the opportunity to take a bathroom break. So I also took the opportunity to do some stretches with all this extra space. Someone in the comment section of my last video told me I was getting old and unfunny. So, you know, I'm trying to get the juices flowing again. Eventually though, the bus driver came back and we were off. Where to? I have no idea. Did I manspread? Of course. Buzzfeed, please come and cancel me. After a whopping 21 stops, however, I was deposited in the middle of nowhere. There was a metro within walking distance and I did consider going over to say hi to the avocados, but I really didn't have time. So I just stood in the shivering cold. So I was on the final bus ride to the test, right? Everything was going fine. Everything was dandy. Uh, except that it wasn't because at this point, the fact that I was going to be writing a test in like two hours really hit me. Hey, Joanna, this public transportation thing might be really fun, but you're going to be writing a quantum mechanics test in less than two hours. So, hey, you should start freaking out. And so I did, which pretty much just consisted of me sitting at the back of the bus with a blank look on my face and just staring into space. Uh, two other things happened. One, we passed by a wig store. <clears throat> Why do I look like Hillary Clinton? And I also almost got off at the wrong stop, but I realized what a big mistake I was making when I was halfway out the door. So I kind of got stuck in the doors. 
yeah, it was a fun experience. But anyways, miraculously, I survived. I know. What? I arrived in one piece. Honestly, I was a little bit too excited for myself. I didn't get lost. I didn't lose anything. I wasn't a public nuisance. I was fired up. So fired up, in fact, that I wrote my test in 23 minutes. I know. When has that ever happened? Like, I didn't struggle once. What night in Bangkok makes the hard man humble? Not much between despair and ecstasy. One night in Bangkok and the tough guys tumble! So, it was time for me to go home. I searched up the return trip on my little telephone device. And turns out, I first had to take two buses. Which was fine. Honestly, like, I turned into an expert of this at this point. Like, I was a girl on the move. I have things to do, places to go, and buses to take. Unfortunately, I came to the very untimely realization, however, that at the end of the second bus, that was the end of the line. Literally. I would have to take a train to get home. And let me explain why this is so bad. Buses, to me, are much easier to take than trains. Like, buses are numbered, so you really have to be on some kind of drug to mess that one up. Trains, you got lines, you got stations, you got directions, you got the awful train stent. So did I get lost? Let me tell you the story. Now, up until this point, I've kept all the names of the buses and stations you know, because I don't want the aliens to find me. But unfortunately, if you're to understand the rest of the story, I think I'm gonna have to use some code names to really provide a picture. So this is me, right? Great. So I had to take the Eggnog Express going east, past Nana's Nut House, and straight through King Candy's Castle. But guess what? There was also an Eggnog Express westbound. And guess what happened? <laughs> I took the westbound. How in the candy-covered frick was I supposed to know which way was right? Like, all the signs were so convoluted. I asked an officer, and he told me to go this way, that way, back over here, around there, and finally you'll end up here. What's that supposed to mean? It was only when I stepped off the train at Peppermint Palace that I really knew I had royally messed up. So I started to freak out, you know, I lost my noodles. I didn't know what to do. I needed a compass. I've never used a compass. I was trying to How are you going to use a compass okay. if you don't I even know how to use it? Are you Jenna, actually you're never going to get are home at this point? Like, like, you might as well just the live on the train. I don't want to say that. Set up camps, put up a tent, and just go back. Unfortunately, the misery didn't end there. Hey, Joanna, let's add another dimension of lost. Yeah, that's right. I took a northbound train. It sent me to the middle of Lollipop Lagoon, and there was no rainbow trail in sight. I guess you could say I had a brain freeze. <laughs> Eventually, though, I ran around for long enough, and someone came and helped me get my wits, and I was back where I was supposed to be. Now, at this point, it was only 3.30 p.m., so I decided to go to the gym and go for a run, you know, to just clear the headspace a bit. I would run outside, but it's so cold that I'm pretty sure my legs would just snap off like little spaghettis if that happened. Was I excited to run on the treadmill? God, no. Running on the treadmill is like the worst thing ever invented by humankind. It's like the boringest thing we've ever made and it doesn't get better no matter how hard you try. But yeah, eventually I finished my daily dose of torture and I was changing to go back home, call it a day, when this happened. Actually, I'll act it out. Oh my God, my phone is ringing. I wonder who it could possibly be. <laughs> I think I forgot how to breathe in that moment. Unfortunately though, they were not looking to sponsor me. I know, uh, that's like the one sponsorship I will ever take. It was just them calling their loyal customers, which, okay, what's that supposed to mean? To let them know that their Black Friday sale was starting early just for them. It was time for a shopping spree. So then I ran back to the train station at full speed. I mean, this was a big event, don't get it twisted, and I waited for the train again. I was completely alone in the station and I was honestly expecting the Joker to come around the corner and just kill three people with a pistol, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. I jumped on the train and I was off to Aritzia though. Keep in mind, it was 5.30 at this point. I was hungry, tired, and hungry. But that didn't faze me. I was personally invited to spend money. 
Can we appreciate the manipulation here? Unfortunately though, I did try on some stuff, but they didn't have my size in anything really. I did try on this bodysuit, but when I found out that it was a thong bodysuit, I got thoroughly disgusted. Like, I'm not here trying to floss my ass cheeks, thank you very much. I did buy one thing though. It's not from Aritzia. However, I think it has to be discussed because it is of utmost importance. Someone post made a disco ball. So yeah, my dudes, that's it. I ran away from home, got lost on the train, and bought these boots. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I love you so much. Stay funky, stay spunky, and stay spicy. And I'll see you in the next one. Toodles! It's me, Jesse and Ari. If, we, if they test me, they're sorry. Ride us up like a hurry and pull up in this Ferrari.